Hey guys, it's Jen. Welcome back to my channel. Today we're gonna make a Mickey Mouse cake. Yay! The ambassador of Disney. I used a Squishmallow as my template for making this Mickey Mouse cake because I think it is just so adorable and it's a really easy way to make a shaped cake of Mickey Mouse. He is just so cute. Oh boy! Mickey Mouse, are you flattered or are you worried that you're gonna get in trouble from Minnie Mouse? No comment. Smart move. So excited. Let's do this. Let's talk cake. Hot dog, hot dog, hot diggity dog. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up to let me know. And if you'd like to learn how to bake and decorate more cake and sweets, start now by subscribing and clicking the bell so you receive notifications every time I post a new video. Here are the tools you're going to need if you want to take a quick screenshot of this. I baked five eight inch round cake layers for this cake because I'm sizing this cake to be about as big as an eight inch Squishmallow. I use my vanilla cake recipe for carving. You can find the recipe link in the description below because it's very moist but it's not too delicate for carving. Third layer up I'm going to put in some straws for support to support the weight and it also helps hold the layers together when we're carving it. I make sure not to put them too far out though because I don't want to carve into the straws. I use big milkshake or boba straws. After we're done stacking and leveling the cake, we're gonna put this in the refrigerator for 20 minutes to chill to firm up the buttercream to make the cake more stable for carving. Don't chill it longer than this though or it will dry out the cake. I like to carve three-dimensional cakes two-dimensionally first. So I'll trace the front and back and the sides of the object or a picture of the object to get a feel for the shapes. So after I carve the two-dimensional sides and then the two-dimensional front and back, then I use the shape of the, those as a guide to finish carving it three-dimensionally. If you want more detailed instruction on this, you can check out my video, Five Secrets to Carving Cakes. And I actually use the footage from this video to explain it, so it's perfect. I find it very helpful to divide my shape into a grid so I can see that my widest part of the Squishmallow is about a quarter of the way up. And I, when I get to the top of my cake, I should be about a quarter of the way in. Ooh, I should make some Mickey Mouse Clubhouse cake pops with all of these cake scraps. When we took my daughter to Disney World, I totally surrendered all of my dignity when by the end of day two, I actually got into her stroller. <laughs> I was like, I need to sit now. I need to stop walking now. Let's just say I got a lot of looks. Some judgmental, some laughing, some envious. Like they wish they had a seat. Kind of like when you tell people you're going to Hawaii, they're like, oh, good for you. Finishing up my crumb coat here. Make sure to lock in those crumbs. I like to just use a big sheet of acetate to smooth out the crumb coat. But when I frost it later, I use a smaller one. Then put your crumb coated cake in the refrigerator for at least 30 minutes or longer if you want. Now it won't dry out now that it has a crumb coat. Awesome, step one is complete. All right, now it's time to frost. We're gonna make red and black buttercream. For the red buttercream, make sure you use a red that does not have a bitter taste. You could use the brand Americolor, which is really good or wilted no taste red. And for the black, I like to turn it into chocolate buttercream first by adding cocoa powder and then adding a black gel food color. Whatever food color you end up using, make sure it's gel based and you may have to add a little milk to your buttercream to offset the cocoa powder if it gets too thick. And remember that these colors will oxidize, meaning that um, they're gonna get a little darker as they sit. I decided to make the transition between the red and the black frosting about three and a quarter of the way up. So I made marks along the cake and then connected those and then started frosting the red. It's okay if you get red buttercream over the line because we are going to scrape that off with a piece of floss, oddly. <laughs> if you'd like more details on how to frost curves, you can check out my video, Five Secrets to Frosting Curves. I will put a link in the video description below. We're gonna scrape away that red frosting and then we're gonna use striped cake technique. We're gonna pipe as straight of a line as we can of the black and then as straight of a line as we can of the red directly under that, making sure there's no gaps between the red and the black. 
Now we're gonna frost these stripes straight across, making sure to wipe our blade between each swipe. And then apply the black. I cannot get that Mickey Mouse Clubhouse song out of my head. <laughs> Luckily though, I weirdly like it. I love Disney World so much. What is your favorite part of Disney World? Comment down below. I think mine is when they do the fireworks over the castle. That is just so magical. And I really love the haunted mansion with the dancing ghosts. It's so cool. All right, now we can get to the fun part. Let's do the ears first because they should dry overnight depending on the humidity where you live. Just use your judgment. We need these to harden because they're going to be sticking out of the cake. I just buy black fondant because fondant is so annoying to color black. So just grab some fondant and warm it and knead it in your hands. If it's sticking to you, you can rub a little vegetable shortenings on your hands like lotion. Then roll it into a ball and dust your workstation with cornstarch and your fondant roller if necessary. And just roll it out to the thickness you'd like. I used a two and a half inch circle cookie cutter and then I flipped my uh, parchment paper upside down so I wasn't um, touching the pencil side with my fondant and then I just kind of pushed it into place into the till it reached the line so it was the right shape and then put the ear on a piece of foam so it dries faster and once the ears are hard you can put them on top of the cake and I just push them into the cake and if they don't seem sturdy enough, you can put some buttercream in the bottom of the ears and the front and the back and then chill the ref um, cake in the refrigerator for 20, 30 minutes um, to let the buttercream harden. This is starting to look so cute already with those cute Mickey Mouse ears. Now we can move on to my favorite step, making the adorable face. I can't believe this, but I have not been to Disneyland yet. I have got to go. I think I'm afraid to let go of that last bribery card. <laughs> like, I gotta have one in my pocket. You know what I'm saying? Daughter's been to Disney World. Santa, you know, you can't use that all year long. It just doesn't work. Thank goodness for Elf on the Shelf. I'm just kidding. I don't bribe my daughter often. I'm actually going to make the white buttons first because they're white and less messy. And you can just use the back of a standard piping tip. Just make sure the opening on the other side is big enough. You could stick a toothpick or something in there in case you can't get your little piece of uh, cut out out. So just roll out your white fondant pretty thin and then cut it out. And again, uh, flip the parchment paper over and just mold it into shape. Okay, now let's do the eyes and nose. Again, using the back of the piping tip and mold the nose into place and the eyes will already be the correct shape. And then put these in a Ziploc bag so they don't dry out while we make the actual face. The face is a little off-white so I mixed in a little bit of ivory. Then roll it out pretty thin, cut out the face and place it over the fondant upside down and then cut it out with an X-Acto knife. Speaking of Disney World, those wristbands connected to your credit card are so dangerous. I just swipe it and I feel like everything's free and it totally isn't. All right, now we're gonna wanna put this face on the cake right away because we need it to be flexible. It should just stick on there, but if it doesn't, all you have to do is brush a little water on the cake where you're gonna be placing the face. And I use a little toothpick to cheat and poke where the eyes and nose and button should be. And you can smooth out the face with a fondant smoother if need be. And then you can go ahead and place those. Just put a little bit of water on the back of the pieces of fondant. Be careful not to put too much water on it though because we don't want that black to bleed. And make sure that you put the eye directly where you want it right away because um, that black will streak. If that does happen, you can just soak it up with a paper towel and wipe it away. And don't forget, this isn't the last step. We got to add that cute little tail. It's always great when the back of the cake looks super cute too. Oh my gosh, he is looking so adorable. I could just eat him up, literally. All right, last but not least, let's make that cute little tail. All you have to do is grab your black fondant and roll it up into a rope and 
uh, roll it a little longer on one end with more pressure so it comes to a point and just place it on your cake. It should stick, but if you have any trouble, you can just put a little bit of uh, water on the back of the tail. Aw, that little tail is so cute. Guys, I absolutely love this cake. It is so adorable. You should also check out my Benny the Bigfoot Squishmallow cake. I love it. And I've got lots of other Disney cakes. Please send me pictures of the cakes you make. I love getting pictures. And if you have any ideas of what you'd like me to bake and make next, let me know in the comments. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I can't wait to see you next time.